Right, so the next job is going to be to clean and adjust all the switches. There may be some uh, bad switch diodes for all I know, but the first step is obviously to do the cleaning. So I'm going to use these contact cleaning strips, which we basically just place between the switches, apply pressure and then slide them through. And that cleans the contacts up without abrading them. Okay, so I've adjusted and cleaned all the switches on the back. We still need to do ones from the top side of the playfield, like the targets, and these are the... Uh, cleaning strips that I use so you can see they're actually pretty dirty um, the other thing I need to do is I need to clean up and file the EOS switches on these flippers the flippers are very weak in fact they've got different flippers on them and a closer look at that potentially not the right coils um, I've just uh, filed and cleaned up the uh, cabinet switches so I just need to do the flippers see if we can make them a bit stronger Right, so I've finished cleaning up all the switches. Let's see what works and what doesn't. Obviously, the sound still is a problem. Uh, right, so does this one work? No. So this one still doesn't work. What about this one? Nope. That one still doesn't work. Number three? No. Hmm, okay. So I think we've got a wiring problem. What about these pops? Oh, there we go. Oh, well, those two are much better, but now that one's not working, so I better check the adjustment on that one again. Also, I think we must have a broken wire somewhere on the switch matrix. I need to check the matrix to see if they're all on the same row or column, ones that are out. Right, so some progress. I've uh, looked at the switch matrix for this game, and the row in question is that white grey wire at the top of that connector. Now it's a bit loose, that, so I'll give it a poke with a screwdriver. And now. Thing is working switch wise so the next step is going to be to basically cut that connector off and put a new one on with uh, new Rolex pens. Right so we've got the pop bumpers all working nice now and all the switches are working fine. We've got partial sound again. The uh, right flip is buzzing away so it's got a problem with this EOS. I can't press, let me see if I can actually press it. Yeah, if you just touch it. So it's not got a very good EOS on that. I need to have a look at that, see if we can adjust it better or if it needs replacing entirely. Alright, so there's the lamp test. And we're all good apart from two and four. So I'll get those replaced. Um, that's pretty good. Mostly working lamps, excellent. Right, I've taken out the lamp holder so we can look at number two and number four. Now, number two spins very freely, so it's not making good contact. This is the um, that's the positive connection there, and uh, what I've done is I've just filed it away there to clean up the surface and file up on file it away on the holder. I'm just going to put a big blob of solder on there to join the two pieces together, and I will bet that that brightens it up. There you go. You can see all the numbers now working fine. So I've just been playing on this game and I've been having the game of my life. So look at the score we're on. Ball 2, 10x multiplier, full bonus lit, full right hand loop lit, uh, everything lit at the top. So pretty much everything's lit, I've accomplished everything. The ball's drained and it's just sat there and I've tried poking the switch. Seems like the trough switch is no longer responding, or well, the game's crashed or something, but it's basically stuck halfway through my best ever game. It's a very annoying situation. So I've taken the glass off to see what's going on. Um, so the game looks, you know, CPU board looks like it's running. It's still uh, cycling the lamps and scores and everything. Uh, solenoid voltages are still present, so it's not that it can't kick the ball out. Um, but not responding to switches at all. So I don't know if it's crashed or if the uh, switch circuit's gone out. Yeah, it doesn't respond to anything. So let's just give it a quick reboot. It starts back up. It's not kicking the ball out. 
Okay. Right. So the switches are working, but it's not kicking the ball out, so I'll look into that. Right, so under the apron this was stuck up, but it doesn't appear to be binding or anything. Uh, oh, we've got a free dead spider as well. Um, it doesn't look in terrible condition, there's not huge amounts of play. Uh, let's get a new coil sleeve on it, let's clean it up, take it apart, maybe get a slightly tighter spring. That one's a little loose, that oh, stop is also very loose. Yeah, we need a new stop here. A new, yeah, maybe string in a coil sleeve, let's just make that more reliable. As I don't want that to happen again, that was very annoying. Well, it's fairly clean on here, we'll give it a quick wipe anyway. It's one of the places you don't get to very often, so we'll do that now. I think the next most important job is to deal with these bridge rectifiers. So they look really old, uh, we need to fit fuses, so I'm going to take them off and uh, replace them and fit some inline fuses on the AC side. And talking of fuses, we've got a 15 amp here where there should be a 10. So I'm going to get that replaced. Never overfuse a game, it just ends up in smoking coils if you do. So I've taken out this uh, part of the loom with the bridge rectifiers and the capacitor. I'm going to uh, tidy up the wires here because they're a bit frayed looking. That's not very good. Uh, I'm going to cut these off. The, the crimp tails have been soldered on. I'm just going to solder directly onto some brand new bridges. Putting some fuse holders in line with the AC side to protect the transformer from burning out. And that's pretty much all I need to do. Then we're going to fit back in, we'll uh, screw these into the back box, and we'll stick some labels on, put some fuses in, all that sort of stuff. Right, and this is ready to go back into the machine now. So, clean up the connections on the capacitor and heat shrunk them, fitted the new bridge rectifiers, go through the inline fuses. I've not cable tied them back up yet, I'm going to fit into the cab first and then I'll tie them up neatly, like so. Right, so here's everything plugged back into the cabinet. So we've got the bridges mounted back where they came from. I've put the uh, fuse holes directly under each related bridge and I've labelled solenoid lamp and also the value of the fuse which is 8 amps low blow. So that is ready to test. And I've just completed my next job, which was to replace this unreliable connector. So I've got a new housing on, and it's all Molex crimp pins now. So they will make much better contacts than the original. So let's just clip that on. Let's uh, not do that. <laughs> I need to put a key pin in. I'll put it out one pin then. All right, so that's that. Uh, so we've got a few things we can test now. And let's do that. So this is the driver board on the bench, uh, still having some problems with the switches, so I'm going to replace the connector. Now, I'm only I'm not going to do all of them at the minute, because if you're replacing the board headers, uh, you also need to replace the cable loom connectors as well, otherwise you're just going to dirty up the new headers pretty quickly. So uh, we're going to do one that we've replaced on the switch side, and normally I'm doing he replacement headers. I'll also do this one here, as that's got the flipper power, and you can get weak flippers if these two pins here start to corrode which they usually do. They're slightly dark, so they're not terrible, but I'm going to replace that one, and I'm also going to replace that connector as well in the cab, as that always does help with the flip power. Uh, everything else looks reasonable. No immediate rush to replace those. And funny enough, even the interboard connector looks pretty good. These are normally useless. You can normally see all the pins bent back a bit, but this one looks good. So no rush to replace this. At some point it's doing, because they all do fail eventually. Uh, but for now we'll just do those two connectors, and that will hopefully improve a few things. So the driver board is back on the bench again because I'm having some unreliability problems with the switches, and I've decided I'm going to replace all the headers. Uh, I've just done the interconnect header there, so that's the socket side. Um, and this switch, so that was switch row, switch columns. I can see hairline cracks in the solder there and there. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if we can get a focus. Yeah, I think you can see that. So I'm going to go as if it's somewhere like that. They're probably all going to be like that soon enough. So I'm going to replace them all. So there you go. I've ended up replacing all the connectors around the board, including the interconnect sockets there. And I forgot how annoying it is doing that many in one go. But still, let's go stick in the machine, and hopefully we've improved things. Right, so the driver board is back in. Now, one of the problems that I've been having is every time I power the machine on when it's not been on for a day or two, uh, it loses its settings. So what I've done is, 
I've opened the coin door, which right protects the ram. I'm going to see what happens. Interesting. Okay, so when we start the game up for the first time with the coin door open, the ram is right protected, it doesn't corrupt it. So there's definitely a problem with the ram being enabled before the voltage is stabilised, so I'm going to have to look into that further. Anyway, let's test out this driver board.